Welcome back to another episode of Swedenborg and Life. Today we're going to be chatting about the levels of heaven. Our topics are going to be the levels of heaven and the mind. What are the different levels of heaven like, and how do we open the levels of the mind? So all throughout life we find levels. There are levels of the atmosphere, there are levels of the ocean, there are levels of organization in organisms, from the cellular level to the tissue to the organ. Swedenborg was very adamant about the importance of levels in the world of spirit as well. He even reported that there were levels of heaven. But what does that look like? What are the nature of those levels, and why are they there? But not only that, he asserted that the levels of heaven are directly related to corresponding levels within each of our minds. And why are there similar levels in both heaven and the human mind? And how do the two relate to each other? These are questions that you have probably never asked before, but we're going to try to answer them anyway. So stay tuned. Okay, so it's great to have another uh, chance to talk with all of you on, on Monday night. Thank you for tuning in. Makes a big difference. Today we have some esteemed guests with us. Returning are Sony Werner and Kara Dom. Sony Werner is an associate professor of psychology at Bernathan College, and Kara is a Latin consultant for the New Century Edition Translations of Emanuel Swedenborg's works. Thank you both for coming <laughs> Thank on. Thank you for inviting me I tried me to make the introductions <laughs> quick. It's great to have you. Uh, we had a fun discussion about heaven a few weeks ago, and so yeah. I was hoping we could continue that and get into some of the... Sort of the nuances of, because Swedenborg gives this like sprawling and super detailed account of the afterlife and, and heaven, what people would call heaven. So we're just going to take a look at a few specifics of it today, and we'll start in segment one, which is going to be the levels. Oh, Matt got me again. Okay, I owe Matt a dollar. Um, I'm supposed <laughs> to remember to tell all of you, that in like 12 episodes, I'll get this down. <laughs> all of you who are watching right now, live. Please type in questions or comments if you have them as we're coming up. There's something you want to hear about, something you want to chat about, because in the second half, we'll be getting to those. Um, uh, so, so do that, and, and we'll get to them soon. Now we're going to do segment number one, which is called Levels of Heaven and the Mind. So why would you ever group those together? Well, we're going to take a look at a quote from Swedenborg that will kick us off there. There are, and bear with us because these quotes are long today, but, <laughs> but that's just what it is. There are three heavens very clearly distinguished from each other. There is a central or third heaven, an intermediate or second one, and an outmost or first. These follow in sequence and are interdependent, like the highest part of the human body, the head, the middle or torso, and the lowest or feet. The deeper levels of the human mind and disposition are in a similar pattern as well. We have a central, intermediate, and outermost nature. This is because when humanity was created, the whole divine design was gathered into it, to the point that as to structure, the human being is the divine design and is therefore heaven in miniature. So, uh, Sony, I find it interesting that w with Swedenborg, pretty much always when we're talking about heaven, we're also talking about the human mind, and that mm -hmm. those are always connected. Um, and so why, why do they always uh, connect those two together? Well, I think I'm first talking from a point of view of psychology and then theology. Yes. Uh, psychology is my field. And psychologists, even if they're not religious, they often sort of divide people up, uh, a person up in terms of how do they behave, that's their outermost, mm -hmm. what are they thinking and how do they think, and then what do they love. And that's to me is very, very similar. Oh, that's perfect. Yep. Very similar to it's sort of the obvious parts of who we are, and then a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And in this world, we get to be pretty private about what we're thinking and loving. And we get to practice. So I think that this gives us a clue of what it might be like when we choose where we go to in heaven at the different le levels. Yeah, so, so Cara, it seems like, yeah, like, as people know, so there are different levels in people, and that there are also different levels in heaven. And Swedenborg sort of says that, um, you know, the the levels in us are sort of what cause heaven, you know, our opening of these levels, you know. So could you say a little bit about what that means? Uh, our, our levels. Let's see. So uh, the human mind, the, our thoughts and our feelings are spirit. Yeah. So the spiritual world is what's going on inside us all the time um and we get to work on opening 
uh, ourselves to mm -hmm. different depths, you might say, mm -hmm. so that you, you could open yourself to learning how to be a moral person mm -hmm. in this world. You could open yourself to giving up that you were the source of all knowledge. I will not do that. <laughs> You're not going there. Huh? No. And, and but thanks anyway. And, and see if maybe uh, other other things could inform how you think about things. You might take some cues from God or the Word, the Bible. Yeah. Or you could open yourself to the depth of just trying to love, be as loving as you possibly could. And so all this is going on in our own minds, but that is reflecting how heaven is set up like it said in the reading as a reflection of the divine design which is, comes in levels all the time yeah and mm. people do use that language opening up to things we i open mm. up to new experience you know I, I open you know my feelings are closed they're open that kind of thing and that that this is big in, in swedenborg's description of the mind slash heaven because it's all sort of the same thing to him and that in heaven these different levels of heaven he's talking about are not caused by divisions like you know god is like okay i'm gonna put a fence up and on this side mm -hmm. is one level of heaven and this side is the other it's about the opening of these levels in our minds um that 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 is like i'm you know and we've all kind of so anyway, we've all kind of had different experiences of like oh i really feel like i'm in a heavenly state right now mm -hmm. or i'm just kind of on the periphery or i'm all the way shut up and you know that that's kind of what he's talking about mm -hmm. there right I for some reason, I'm thinking about that story called The Secret Garden. And there's an example of a little girl who wants to get a key to open up the walled garden in England. I have just like a and single visual memory of like a, like ivy is over a wall. It's overgrown. But the reason yeah. I love that is because it's a great metaphor for it. she wanted to go into this, uh, this place, which was a garden. And when she entered in, it was a sense of wonder. And I think it's a little bit like that. If, if we choose to want to explore deeper parts of the uh, sort of tuning in to goodness and truth we can do that with a sense of wonder but we're not required to we could stay at a very materialistic level we can also stay at a kind level that's a layer of heaven as well but if we're not real curious the lord is a place for us as well yeah and we sort of fluctuate day to day you yeah. know sometimes yeah. you are feeling like uh, you have these like wow moments, like oh my gosh, like this is what life mm -hmm. is like, and oh I, I oh I love everyone. This is so great. And sometimes you're just kind of like oh yeah, things are going well. I gotta okay, it's four thirty. I get out of work at five. You know, mm -hmm. but there's kind of these these different uh, levels that yeah. are, that are sort of open and closed in us all the time, and it's probably works well on this earth to have that going on because if you're always in the deepest right. state mm. you it wouldn't might be a choice yeah you wouldn't and you just wouldn't get anything done no you, you wouldn't, your wouldn't your be all that practical yeah. get your bills paid <laughs> right yeah exactly <laughs> i wouldn't get anywhere on time <laughs> so there's just it there's so much that he says about heaven in the mind and their interaction and the different levels it's hard we're, we're only going to be able to cover a tiny slice of it sure but let's expand our slice ever so little mm -hmm. by uh by going to our second segment here okay this is what are the different heavens like so yeah if he's saying that there are these different levels what makes a, a deeper level of our mind what distinguishes these levels of mind so we have a confusing quote from swedenborg here um the heavenly kingdom is the third and deepest heaven uh, the spiritual kingdom is the second or middle heaven. So he's calling these things kingdoms, you know, which is both uh, this heaven and also this thing in us. <clears throat> People in the heavenly kingdom have love for the Lord at their core and charitable feelings toward their neighbor on the outside. People in the spiritual kingdom, though, have charitable feelings toward their neighbor at the core and a faith resulting from charity on the outside. Clearly, then, charity towards one's neighbor forms the bond between the two kingdoms. The heavenly kingdom ends with it, and the spiritual kingdom begins with it. So each takes up where the other leaves off. And I, before I had been sort of like... Uh, quote gathering for this I'd never come across or I hadn't remembered ever coming across mm -hmm. that before that concept so it seems like and we if you guys are just watching this now I'd recommend if you have all the free time in the world go back a few episodes we did one it was called what does it mean to love God and it talked about the difference because he here uses these terms love for the Lord love for the neighbor what does that mean and in brief <clears throat> love for the Lord is love of of good and of helping and of people mm -hmm. and love for the neighbor is love of truth and love of knowledge and that kind of thing so really those terms that's what he's actually meaning so it's what he's sounds like what he's saying is um the 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 inmost heaven is this 
your 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 center is love and your outer sort of level is knowledge but then in the the second state of mind is sort of knowledge to what you would call faith or kind of like external kind of uh, ritual sort of things but they they sort of touch through that and do do either of you ever uh you feel like you kind of have gone through these these two different or these these different kingdoms mm-hmm. in the mind there um yeah i'm trying to think of you know there's definitely times when it seems like uh, oh yeah like i i get it like of course you gotta love everyone because you you think of empathy you know you think of oh it would feel like this to be that person um there are other times when i don't feel it like my my grandma once said that when i was a kid she was like um doesn't it feel better when you share with your sister? And I was like, oh, I've heard you say that, but I haven't noticed it. So. That, yeah. But then it seems sort of like we, we fluctuate between those sure. states. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think especially as we're uh, growing up, we can't ex- be expected to be as sort of spiritually mature as somebody who's lived a long life. And it's nice to ha- have that suggested by our elders who are wiser and kinder. and But... I think we gradually, because we have freedom, especially after we're 20 or so years old, we really do have freedom to decide, uh, what do we want to harbor in our thoughts? Do we really want to think about ourselves all the time or all of our possessions? Or are we really looking for different qualities of how to be kind to others and how to be helpful? And are we doing it because maybe we want a reputation or are we doing it because the Lord really wants us to? And the closer we get to doing it because this is our way to sort of give back to the Lord, we're getting to sort of the deeper heavens when we do that. It may only be momentary, but when we get that, we get a kind of a nice feeling that, yeah. that uh, flows through us. And you think uh, you mentioned deeper heavens there, and Carl, I was thinking you were talking about the Latin word that Swedenborg uses because you think, okay, levels of heaven. All right, well, I want to be on the top level of heaven, so that mm. you know, or I want because I, I want like the the you know, I want my apartment on the top floor so I have the best view. <laughs> Penthouse. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> Penthouse heaven. So, but, but you mentioned that the word that Swedenborg uses, uh, it can, it actually, highest means inmost, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. The word is altus. You know, we get some words like altitude or alto from that okay. word. It means both high and deep. Okay. So uh, inmost is a, is a good way of looking at that. I mean, mm-hmm. our deepest stuff is what, um, I, yeah, I, just the, the way those two words interact is interesting. Yeah. When we talk so about things we word. care about. And, mm. uh, but that's, that's yeah. the Latin. Well, it makes sense. I mean, we, just in common, uh, just the way people talk about things, you know, d- those are both very desirable. Like, oh, this is the, my, my highest thoughts, my deepest thoughts. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. Those well, don't seem far experience. away from no. kind of right. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Right. No, yeah, right. To say, like, this is my, these are my highest aspirations. This is my core. You know, we, we kind of already juxtapose those. And, and he right. talks yeah. a lot about, Swedenborg talks a lot about how spiritually what is higher is what is deeper. So and it's just mm-hmm. interesting that the Latin word, you know, has that written into it. Yeah. And I, so he mm. had it easy. You know, he, he had that concept already laid out for him. Yeah, language. right. <laughs> All right, so let's, we have one more, um, one more segment to get to. So if there are these levels in the mind and we can open them to get into deeper kind of heaven states, how do we open the levels of the mind. That's that's what I would want to know, mm-hmm. man. So let's take a look at, at what Swedenborg said. Um, there are three inner levels of every angel and spirit and of every person here as well. Uh, the people whose third level has been opened are in the central heaven, while the people whose second or first only has been opened are in the intermediate or the outermost heaven. The deeper levels are opened by our acceptance of divine good and divine true gifts. And continue. Let's continue it on the. There's another. This is the continuation of that. People who are actually affected by divine true gifts and let them directly into their lives, into their intentions, and therefore into act, are in the central or third heaven. People who do not let such gifts directly into their intentions, but into their memory and from there into their discernment, intending and doing them as a result of this process, are in the Eden intermediate or second heaven. People who live good moral lives, though, and believe in the divine with no particular interest in learning are in the outermost or first heaven. So there's a lot. I wanted to include the whole quote, though, because he makes several points that I think are interesting. This is further kind of describing the nature of these different different levels of heaven. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so, Kara, can you talk a little bit about how he says that, it, uh, that he kind of gives this primary factor that, that decides the difference is based on how do we how do we act on what he calls divine true gifts or, or spiritual principles? It seems like that's a big part of 
what opens these levels in us, right? Right. I would say uh, um, Swedenborg often paints the picture that in order to make room for divine, what does it say? He said, it says good div and divine true gifts. Yeah. So divine good and divine true gifts. That again is an interesting Latin thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be qualities. Instead of gifts, you could say qualities, okay. characteristics. Uh, things that are coming from the Lord. So some um, things. Some things. Divine that true are some things. Divinely true and divinely yeah. good. So uh, what we need to do is get stuff out of the way. We need to clear mm -hmm. the way to allow that to flow in. And clearing the way means taking a look at our ego. Mm -hmm. What What is it that we're uh, self, so self-concerned about that we we can't let in an influence from above or... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's, if I could add something, ahead. I think it, it very commonly in our modern Western world, we, we tend to put things in a hierarchy. And I think it's a, it's a facsimile, but it's not really what this is. Mm -hmm. For instance, we look at people, how, how, who has the highest IQ? Who has the most education? Who has the biggest income? Who has right. that penthouse? Um, and I don't really think that those are going to determine who gets to go to the higher higher level or use their higher level in other words you don't have to be the genius right to open up and have access like she said you almost have to clear away and then try to receive because it, with the iq thing it's almost like i'm the smartest i've yeah. accumulated the most it's all about me and right. my status it's different than that it's more who, what do i open myself to yeah. receive and swedenborg says that longing for status is toxic to the opening of heaven Within you, it gets in he the actually way. says that you know, like the the person who doesn't want to be greater than anyone, that's they're in heaven. Um, and but he also says heaven is not wanting to be less than everyone, so that you can be greater than everyone in heaven. <laughs> it's sort you of know, a fake yeah, humility, that, kind but, of it. but that doesn't work exactly. And that what he's what he's mentioning here is that a big part of it is the acceptance of these gifts. So it's basically authentically living deeper principles when you hear mm. about them. So, and he kind of describes the second heaven is a state where um, you know, the first heaven is just not really an interest in, in really understanding your impact in the world. It's sort of what, what, how you can be better, do better. The second mm -hmm. one is I learned something. Ooh, like, oh, that sounds like I really should be doing that. That's and right. you kind of process it and every once in a while play. The, the third one is like, wow, that's right. And you act on it. You know, mm -hmm. you really get it in, you know, sort of to this, this immediacy, you know, yeah. in mm -hmm. your life. Um, in yeah. another place in the writings that talks about when you're at that sort of deeper level, it's being deliberate and purposeful. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the, going in from just the living day to day and moving sort of into the uh, the second or intermediate level, it's what I think it's when you're curious. You go, I wonder what it's really like to learn more truth, or it's I wonder what it's really like to really be an effective, helpful mm -hmm. person to the neighbor. It's you're curious about it, and then occasionally you do it. But when you're really at the, open yourself up to that higher level or that deeper level, you just do it deliberately. It's not your you're not a robot. You've chosen to do it, and you really enjoy doing that. And it's a lot less about ego and much more, wow, I get to be an extension right. of what uh, the Lord is yeah. offering. Yeah, I, I think of it as a driving force. It's a drive behind yeah. you that I, I just care about you so much, Sony, and mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything for you <laughs> as opposed to... You're just saying this for the show. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. she doesn't really like me. <laughs> is, I'm just acting. I'm role-playing here. Clearly um, or uh, like, I, I just love... Did you know? I found out today yeah. that if you... Uh, look into somebody's eyes that actually promotes a feeling of connection. So I'm mm -hmm. going to try that. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's more right. like, a, you know, it's coming through a intellectual yes. drive instead of a sort of heart drive yeah. about connecting. It's, yeah, I'm teaching yeah. college classes right now, and I'm teaching a course on altruism. And so I'm, uh, it's fascinating to have 20 students there, and they're all talking about, gee, what about this aspect, and what about that aspect? And then they act, all go out and do community service three hours a week. And so then they have to reflect on it. So they're thinking about it and curious about it. So I'm kind of encouraging them to go from just mundane to mm -hmm. thinking about it and then make, maybe doing it. Yes. I, 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 and I, with what um, you're both really, really saying, um, it's sort of the difference between like, Oh yeah, well, so I heard that there are people who are, you know, starving somewhere in the world. Whatever. It's like okay, so that that's not great. I wish that wasn't happening. Like that's kind of first level. Mm -hmm. Second level is like oh yeah, well I better um, I'm gonna I'm gonna write like a ten dollar check, you know, once mm -hmm. a year to to get oh I'll, everyone's and I'll go to do this food drive once. But third level is like. Oh, I'm going into the field and like I got I'm gonna rally other people and we got to put a stop to you know these are mm -hmm. kind of the 
the levels of involvement. So mm-hmm. that, that so to you, those of you at home, we've touched a little bit on it. That his, his the levels of heaven, the levels of the mind is a huge thing. But hopefully, this gives you a little tool to start to work into that concept. And we're going to be taking the questions and comments that you guys have when we come back. We're going to go to a short video break, and then we'll be in. So stay tuned. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, everyone, for staying put. Uh, We have now our second segment, which is our question and answer period. Uh, If you're just joining us or just joined us recently, all you got to do is write your comments down there in YouTube where you're hanging out, or if you found us on Facebook, go write the comments there. We'll grab them, and we'll, we'll try to answer them now. So let's take a look, see what people are thinking around this subject on the web. This is Kathy, YouTube. Um... I have a question. I hope it doesn't sound silly. Okay. No, it's not going to be silly. I can already tell. Okay. As God says in heaven, there are many mansions. I'm wondering if that means different levels. Mm, That's great. I think the first thing I key in on is not so much the mansions, but the word many. Yeah. There's going to be incredible variety. Mm -hmm. And I think... I think that uh, we are all going to be cherished. That's what I think about with mansions, not just the physical big building, but yeah. that we are going to feel that we love our home. And there's a variety of different kinds of communities and different qualities of people who are much more about doing or much more about thinking or much more about their feelings and receiving feelings from the Lord. Yeah. So to me, the variety is what that corresponds to. Go yeah, the, uh, the the we'll each have a home. We all we all have a home. We are are we all are a home, um, and there's room for all of us. Yeah, I would hope so, man. That that would be better than not enough room. And so and Kathy, I, I like how you're thinking. Oh, maybe there's a connection there because the way Swedenborg talks about sacred texts, and particularly the the Old and New Testaments, he says, uh, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that there's there's a sort of almost like an infinite truth within them that he's that. He says that there's a, a lot of different ways you can read a passage from it that have that truth. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you're feeling something that's like, "Oh, is that connected to that?" There's probably something mm-hmm. there. You mm-hmm. know that that there's there's all these levels of understanding. It. So yeah. if that's hitting you, Kathy, like that, then maybe that 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 might be an indicator that you've tapped into something cool mm-hmm. there. So yeah. thanks very much for that. Let's take a look at our next one. This is Edward. Um, problem unseen is hell is closer than people think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we have this from Facebook, and so that's that's a good. So we're talking about oh, the levels of the uh, heaven are levels of the mind. So I would assume levels of hell are levels of the mind. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. if you look at the legal system, for instance, whenever somebody is is found out for being premeditated in their evil actions, right. you know, you have different levels of degrees of murder and manslaughter. Mm-hmm. It's very similar to what the writings say about well, how serious or severe is the evil or the hell that you're in? And if you plot it and plan it and think about it and are wondering about who can I kill and how big can it be, that's the most extreme. And if you love doing it, it's really the most extreme. And if you yeah. justify it, that's kind of the intellectual level. Sure. If you just do it by accident, that's not as serious. Yeah. So to me, it's just the reverse of, mm-hmm. of what we're talking about with the three levels. Yeah, that's a, that's a great analogy. Carter, do you have any thoughts on the levels of the mind and hell and all um, that? Uh, yeah, she's. I concur up. with Sony. Yeah, I mean and that's a really that's a really tangible sort of concrete. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that, that's sort of. Yeah, is it you're you're doing things? You know, the lowest level of hell in the mind would be you're harming but you're ba- almost unaware of it I mean, yeah. you're, you're a little apathetic but you're not you'd probably stop if if you were pressed you know but then it's yeah. like the getting more into like intentionally and and thinking about it and and thinking about how to get away with it and and loving it so right. yeah i think it would just you know be a be a mirror kind more of. severe mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. okay great one edward thank you let's take a look uh this is from mark when you're down, is there a magic pill like prayer, meditation, or certain activities that can lift you out of a hellish state and elevate you into a heavenly state? Mark, that's a great mm-hmm. question. And if I found that pill, I would be selling it. Uh, <laughs> you know, that a lot of people are looking for that. Do so. What what has worked for for you guys? For me, it's concentrated compassion and empathy. So if let's say if. I'm tending to not forgive somebody. I'm bitter or, oh, they really messed up my life kind of a thing. If I try to push that aside and instead think, 
I wonder what it's like to be that person. I wonder if they had a bad day. I wonder if they're hurting. I wonder if they're sick. I wonder if they're... And as, as long as I'm trying to think about what their perspective is, Every second I'm doing that, I'm not thinking about me and I'm not harboring negative mm-hmm. thoughts. And that starts to open me up to listening better. And then yeah. the whole conversation changes. I just had this happen this last weekend. I had many reasons to be very bitter about two people and I decided to concentrate on that. And the Lord filled me with some more compassion and then I was able to be more present and just really listen to them with a, a kind heart. I couldn't get there without first trying to understand their perspective. Mm-hmm. To me, that's the magic pill. Nice. Yeah, that's great. Cara, have you had has it, have you ever had success with a technique of some kind? Mm. Uh, mo- I agree about that's a great way of thinking about other people rather than yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to do things for other people mm-hmm. helps. I don't have a magic pill, but I do. Yeah. I do find that I pray um, to help change my feelings. I feel so okay. incapable of changing my feelings, so I try to do something focused on something useful getting something done yeah and pray for a change of heart Mm -hmm. yeah because feelings do tend to come and go they they are transient that's cool because in within that prayer you're acknowledging that my feelings are something separate from reality yeah and they can Mm -hmm. be changed Mm -hmm. but even sometimes that matters and this is something that i've thought about a, a lot and not to plug another of our videos but one of the techniques that's worked best for me is in another video on this channel that's called How to Stop Unwanted Thoughts, where I basically say, I get some sort of short little phrase that, that mm-hmm. reminds me of sort of a deeper kind of eternal truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just repeat, I get a few of those kind of in my, my holster, or quick access, and I, and I repeat those when, when I'm getting bombarded by negative thoughts or something, so that I'm not engaging with negative thoughts, I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. having conversation, I'm not getting deeper into those, but I'm just, re- you know, like I'm... Uh, whatever phrase is meaningful for you um re- repeating that so that that's been a big one then as you were mentioning car like just getting up and doing some things mm-hmm. um and also the um physically just changing the physical environment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. turn on lights um run like get your heart rate up mm-hmm. um yeah. these kinds of things music can help yeah. music right exactly. a certain music that you associate with something positive as opposed to the negative really can make a difference yeah. another one you know you're talking about a phrase one of my favorites comes from the musical Les Mis where it says to love another person is to see the face of God mm-hmm. and if I'm having a hard time loving the person right in front of me I actually say that phrase to my head mm. yeah. and then I go how do I love that person okay if I do then I might get lucky enough to sort of quote see the face of God yeah. and it's a it's a very sweet phrase it changes my state yeah I find little phrases are, are little ways ones. to remember truths that are blocked out when yeah. you're in that sort of yeah. cloudy state of mind. So, I man, we could talk about this forever. Uh, <laughs> uh, and what I would generally say, just try try a bunch of, make sure you're trying things. Like yeah. Try yeah. All Have a things. toolbox of what yeah. does it work for you. Yeah, just try as many things as you can in a row. <laughs> um, change the physical situation. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course talk to people i mean yeah solitude makes things a lot harder yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're vulnerable when we're alone <laughs> yeah okay let's take another one we got this is from reed debster uh do you think that people go to heaven or hell immediately after you die or do you think they are an in-between place until the judgment mm-hmm. so Kara, what the what what is your understanding of what swedenborg says about that situation uh, I think that Swedenborg, uh, when he, a judgment would be our own personal judgment. So there's not like judgment. a general, <clears throat> right. Um, and a judgment sounds pretty harsh. Right. But, uh, mm, sorry. <laughs> so, so we, we, we come to the, uh, we are, we die, our spirit continues living and we get a chance to really sort ourselves out to see what we really care about most. That is what Swedenborg would call our judgment, is our yeah. process of finding in ourselves. Nobody's telling us who we are or what we've, where we're going. Mm-hmm. We have been choosing it all our life and we get to really refine that um, choice with new clarity mm-hmm. when we're just in the world of spirit. Um, and then, and then we go to our homes. We go to our one of many mansions, yeah. um, and that's how Swedenborg uh, is describing this personal judgment. I would say. Well, it's a good. It's, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, that he does use a word like sort of judgment and that kind of thing. But he describes it yeah just as a a movement that takes place and that everyone is is propelling themselves. So there's not that the 
contrasting with the traditional um, God is there with handcuffs, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's a great point. And then there's uh, the, uh, he talks about, a, you know, this world of spirits being this kind of, you're not in heaven or hell, but th- this sorting out process that you were discussing, Cara, yeah. can take, can be very short if we're just about, like if we already pretty much live like we think. Yeah. And it can be take a long time if we uh, put out a, a character that's not really, we so don't really know. Hypocrisy, yeah. yeah. We have a persona that's public and a persona that's private, and we don't really have integrity of integrating the two. But I think th- that kind of melts away in the next world, and we're surrounded by these very loving uh, angels that are trying to help us really look at ourselves. I often think about there's, there's almost like there's two video screens, and we get to watch our life from our point of view and from other people's points of view. And then we get if we look at it from our sister or our neighbors or our husband's point of view and go, oh, I don't really care if I hurt them. You know, yeah. it's all about me. And that's sort of confirming, yeah, you really want to be at a place where it is all about you and you're your own king of your own kingdom. But if you realize, oh, ah, I didn't know I did that. And we start to have some remorse. I think we start to realize, ah, I wish I hadn't done that. And that starts showing that we'd rather be not kind to people. And that's a way for us to sort out what we, where we would fit best. The life review. The life review. uh, Near-death experiences. There's often an element of that. Okay, I think we got another one here. This is Rebecca. Hi, I've really been enjoying your YouTube videos. Thanks, Rebecca. In last week's show, meditation was mentioned as a source of surrender of wills, to let go of worry, etc. There are so many methodologies in regards to meditation. Mm. Where does one start? Um, have either do either of you meditate? I'm very bad at meditating. Me too. So where I start is I can't do this very well. I'm thinking about <laughs> stuff. Um, have have either of you um, you know participated in any kind of meditation courses or groups, or do you do it regularly, or do you have thoughts on that? I can't claim that I'm a terrific meditator, but yeah. I do it in small places and in small segments. And I try to practice a little bit of focusing on something visual that is um, beautiful, mm-hmm. usually nature, and my mind. And then I try to push away distracting thoughts like, I have to do this and I have to do this. Just try to push those away. And then, tr- again, I find compassion is better than just trying to have an empty head. Mm. I can't have an empty head. The thoughts F- keep to running focus in. On something to focus, especially on somebody I'm having some issues with, to try to figure out, okay, the Lord put this person in my life for a reason. What can I do to try to have compassion for this person instead of being angry at them all the time? So that really seems to help. And then the Lord provides me with a little bit more empathy for them, and then I usually am able to then behave a little more differently with them than I might have if I was just impulsively angry. So to me, that's the benefit of meditation. Now, I I see other people who spend a lot of time in very quiet meditation, and that works better for them, but I'm not a practicer of that. I I admire them for that because I think they're very serene. Yeah, Cara, do you do... Can you quiet the mind or is it focus the mind? Ooh, I'm not good at quieting the mind. Yeah. Um, and I did see a meditation teacher once saying, that's great. That's what the mind does. It does stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so to accept it sort of and, and not like try to shut it up. But yeah. for me, I just if I can have a few minutes of silence, even just silence mm-hmm. and and try not to direct the thoughts that come into my mind. You just observe. You just observe. And I, I like the mantra that I will be done if I'm if I'm struggling with mm-hmm. something. I just try to like figure that there's that a divine op- omnipotence mm-hmm. that's uh, carrying us all along and try to tune into that. Nice. And that's kind of, and Swedenborg will often use the, he'll say, I was meditating on something, mm-hmm. like on some topic. He and, focuses. And that there, yeah. Cara, you're kind of describing I'm meditating on this idea of divine governance, you know, yeah. so that's a good one. Those are great ones. Yeah, I think for me, that's uh, if I'm, yeah, I'm going to intentionally set my thought conversation somewhere where the, that I feel is positive or I'm doing some activity. Yeah, I feel like you can do a meditation washing the dishes if you're just mm-hmm. thinking about the good sort of it's doing and not thinking about self. I mean, that mm-hmm. that can be meditated for me. So I think, yeah, it's just like. Um, with the body, it's like what what's healthy. Well, mm-hmm. different bodies need different things to eat. They need mm-hmm. different kinds of exercises. So there's no uh, concrete help for you, <laughs> um, but hopefully some interesting comments. So I think we have two more, um, and let's get to our we okay. We don't have two more. Do we have any more? 
No. Okay, I think we have. I think we have no more. Thank you guys. <laughs> Those were great because we got to get moving. We're, we're so we're just gonna come back and do our quick little course. Oh, correspondence is meditation. I mean, this is you guys have seen. You've been oh, on the show right. before. It's it's a little active kind of meditation thing. So maybe this will help with that. So we'll be back after a quick quick video break. To our, this is great that we just got a question about meditation because mm. this is the closest thing I found. That, you know, that meditation is huge in spirituality now. It always has been, you know, in, in Buddhist type traditions, but now, like you know, a lot of people across the West are kind of doing this as like meditation. Um, but there's in Swedenborg talks a lot about meditating, but he doesn't really give you instructions like sit this way, breathe this way, something like that. But I found one spot where he sort of does describe mm. uh, what I would consider a meditation. Um, and that's where I got this segment we we're going to do from. It's called Correspondences. There's our lower third. Um, <laughs> and uh, how the game is played is that Swedenborg talks about images or, or the, the appearance of things in this world. Uh, they signify things of the spirit or deeper realities. And that by... Um, by focusing, he says, he says in this passage, I'm thinking of that sight was meant for us to be able to see external things while contemplating internal things. So if we can mm -hmm. see these external manifestations of things and thinking about what they mean, that we're actually, this is, that we're, we're, we're tapping into something. So we're going to try to do that right now. And today we're going to look at lions um, and everything has sort of a positive and negative sense to it. Lions obviously can be destructive, but today we're looking at them in a positive sense. Swedenborg says lions are a symbol of the power of divine truth. Um, so this is, the, this is you know, the truth of God. This is the, the power of the divine um, to, to accomplish good. So we're going to take a look at like, uh, you know, half a minute of lion imagery. So be picturing the power, you know, of God or of, of the truth and uh, see if that linking the image to that gives you anything. So here, we'll start it now. I don't know if any of you have heard a big cat make noise because you know I've I've only seen them in real life uh, in zoos, but um, when they roar, and I've mm -hmm. heard a tiger roar, but that that's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, hopefully that was fun for you, the correspondence thing. Um, thank you all for watching. If you want to help this show spread, you can make a small donation to the Swedenborg Foundation. They're a nonprofit. Just click the description of this YouTube video, and you can just make a little teeny PayPal donation. It'll just help get the show out to other people. Cara and Sony, always great to have you on. Love chatting about Evan. Glad we got to do it again. Um, Thank thanks you. for for like broaching this this complex topic with me. I uh, appreciate it. Hope to have you both back again someday if you're willing. Thanks. thanks Loved it. Uh, all right, and all of you, we will be back next week with another episode. Thanks for hanging out.